the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. Ultra big screen and even more ultra big camera. So ultra, just like me. Correct ma, my name is Shane Tan. Xian Tan Chao Ren. Ultra man, correct la! These days, flagship Android smartphones are getting so premium that they rival the fruit brand, not only when it comes to features, but also price. But it's okay, because you guys seem to be ultra bangsawan that even during MCO, you can buy until shortage. Until your mother want to buy also cannot. In this review, we're gonna see if this Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra is actually ultra or out la. By the way, this phone is so big, can we still call it Xiaomi? Shouldn't it be called Dami? The Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra has been out for quite some time already, so this video is actually a little bit late. Actually, no, it's very late. But do you know why it's never too late? For me to share my fresh Bang Sawan perspective on this phone. Anyways, let's get right into it. The Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra has a starting price of 4,299 ringgit in Malaysia. If you're interested, feel free to check out the links below after watching this review. In terms of aesthetics, this phone is definitely doing the whole if you got it, flaunt it thing. Flexing its massive camera module that you can even see from one kilometer away. It comes in two colors, black and white, with a ceramic back and metal frame that looks really sleek. The frame on the black version even has a slightly darker gunmetal color to match. Pretty cool. To be honest, that glossy back on the black version is a fingerprint magnet, kind of like my 90,000 kawaii grand piano. Flex. So I personally prefer the white one because it's really ultra white. Chow deep. Oh yeah, the Corning Gorilla Victus glass that slightly curves around the sides of the screen is actually so tough that even if you're not a bangsa one, you can still handle it recklessly. Ah, see or not? Scared what? Or scared drop one? Ah. Huh. In terms of dimensions, this phone is one thick boy at 164.3mm long, 74.6mm wide and 8.4mm thick. Weighing in at 234 grams, though the phone is a little top heavy, it actually feels decent in my hand for both one and two handed use, mostly due to the fact that the rest of the phone is pretty slim. One thing to note is that the phone tends to run pretty warm and that's with regular activities. If you game on it for a couple of hours, it's gonna get a little bit toasty but nothing to worry about. In terms of specifications, you'll find a Snapdragon 888 an Adreno 660 GPU, 6th Gen AI engine, 12GB of LPDDR5 memory, and 256GB of UFS 3.1 storage, which is actually 3 times faster than the previous generation. And this could come in really handy if you love taking raw images or 8K video on your phone and transfer the files to your computer for editing. Technically, specifications on a phone doesn't always correlate with actual performance or user experience. But it's good to see that a brand like Xiaomi that is trying to topple the giants is sparing no expense here. On top of that, the Mi 11 Ultra is also 5G capable thanks to that Snapdragon X60 modem inside the phone. 5G coverage is still pretty iffy in most places around the world, so your mileage may vary. Oh, as a side note, before I forget, the phone also has NFC support. For charging and file transfer purposes, the Mi 11 Ultra has a USB-C port that supports 67, not 69 watt fast charging via the provided power adapter, which is actually included, see? But wait, there's more. The phone also supports 67 watt wireless charging. What? How does it even do that? One often overlooked feature on the Mi 11 Ultra is actually the way it handles battery life. Thanks to the combination of that Snapdragon AI engine and that massive 5000mAh battery in a dual battery configuration, you can actually watch Netflix or YouTube continuously on this bad boy for 10 hours, give or take an hour or two, uh, depending on your screen brightness and also volume. 
As my daily driver, because I actually have one, you know, using it to serve the web for my favorite prawn site because I'm an Aquarius, checking emails because I do business, visiting sites or even going on YouTube to let Linus scream at me. This phone really surprised me. From 100% to just 3 to 4%, the Mi 11 Ultra took about 69 to 82 hours, which is kind of crazy. I could fly to Vegas for CES, then fly to Taiwan for Computex, and then fly back home to Malaysia, and I would still have more juice in my phone's battery. Ultimately, the way this phone stretches out 5,000 milliamp hours of battery is just gillabops. Oh yeah, I was also using a mix of Wi-Fi and mobile data, so yeah, crazy. Editor Shane here. Just wanted to add that when I was testing the camera on this phone for photo and video, including a few minutes of slow motion shots, it went from 100% to 15% in literally 30 minutes. So do bring a power bank if you intend to shoot a lot of video footage. For the display, you get what Xiaomi calls a quad-curved 6.81-inch WQHD AMOLED dot display with a punch hole for that 20 megapixel selfie camera in the corner. Like most flagship phones today, the screen is practically side to side and edge to edge. But unlike most flagship phones, the corners don't actually go all the way to the end. Instead, Xiaomi seems to have just chosen to round off each corner, which bears a near striking resemblance to that Galaxy S21 Ultra. I mean, if it ain't broke, why fix it? The screen has a max resolution of 3200 by 1400 pixels in a 20 by 9 aspect ratio, a pixel density of 515 pixel per inch, which is really high and an advertised contrast ratio of 5 million to 1. Uh, though to be honest with OLED, I wouldn't worry too much about contrast ratio uh, because the blacks are literally pitch black so it's gonna have very high contrast anyways. But it seems like Xiaomi really wanted to one-up the competition because the screen on this phone pack a peak brightness of 1,700 nits which supports proper HDR10+. To put things into context, a flagship gaming monitor like the ASUS PG32UQX can only go up to 1,400 nits which is already crazy bright and most monitors out there which advertise HDR10 or HDR10 plus support barely hits 1,000 nits. In fact, this phone is so bright that it messes with my sleep because I'm so used to browsing only fair Facebook every night before I go to sleep. See? Facebook? Oi! Jangan terpesong! So do yourself a favor and flip on that auto brightness or even night mode. Oh yeah, we also get a refresh rate of 120 hertz, and usually manufacturers would put in a touch sampling rate that is twice that at 240 hertz. But Xiaomi went a little extra and doubled down with a 480 hertz touch sampling rate. By default, this refresh rate is set to 60 hertz. So if you want that sweet, sweet 120 hertz, you need to enter the display setting and make the change yourself. Once you switch to that 120Hz refresh rate, scrolling on this phone feels buttery smooth. And thanks to that 480Hz maximum touch sampling rate, it also feels very responsive. Overall, the display on the Mi 11 Ultra is simply gorgeous to look at. No matter if you're binging Netflix or playing games, you're gonna get vibrant colors that just pop. Words are also ultra sharp, crispy, and easy to read thanks to that high resolution screen. Of course, good solid hardware is not the only thing that makes a phone. You also need solid software, a solid OS, and a solid user interface. And if all these factors are solid, then you know that you have officially sold it. Wow, this writer, solid, 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 so limited his vocabulary. Someone he said he's been to Oxford. Oxford la god! Anyways, the Mi 11 Ultra runs on Google's Android 11 OS right out of the box and at the time of this video, the phone prompted me to update the overlying Mi UI to version 12.5.4. Xiaomi's Mi UI is basically the layer that sits on top of Android 11. To be frank, I've never been a huge fan of Mi UI, primarily due to the fact that the majority of Xiaomi's own apps are riddled with more advertisements than YouTube. Then again, you're paying quite a bit for this phone. I'm guessing that the marketing team at Xiaomi is going to their boss and saying, Lao Ban, this phone is so expensive, you have to use Xiaomi. 
While MIUI 12 does look and feel cleaner than the last version, it's not completely without bugs. For instance, I face this very weird issue with my keyboard minimizing itself halfway when I'm typing before I hit enter. Fortunately, after updating to the newest firmware, this happened far less frequently already. Next, let's address the elephant in the room, this massive three camera module. We're talking about a 50 megapixels wide angle main camera, a 48 megapixels ultra wide, and another 48 megapixels telephoto lens with up to five times optical zoom. With digital zoom, the Mi 11 Ultra allows you to go up to 120x, which lets you take images from far, far away. But I wouldn't use it unless you're in broad daylight, and still, the images wouldn't be that clear. So I would just stick to that 5x optical zoom or the 10x X hybrid zoom for the most part. The 50 megapixels main camera has the largest sensor that I've seen in a smartphone yet, which is close to one inch at one over 1.12 inch, followed by the two other cameras with the same half inch sensor size. Something interesting to note is that other than the ultra wide, the main camera and telephoto both come with optical image stabilization. Now you don't really need stabilization on ultra wide for the most part because camera shakes are less noticeable. I'm actually quite impressed about the cameras on this phone. Under the right lighting, the colors are rendered naturally without oversaturation and the images are sharp with a good amount of detail. To get the best out of this phone, you have to utilize that close to 1 inch 50 megapixels main camera which really sets it apart from the competition. Why? One word. Bokeh. While some phones use a lot of artificial image post-processing to create an illusion of a shallower depth of field or portrait mode, here you actually get the real thing. Of course, to get the most amount of bokeh, make sure that you set your aperture wide open and go close to your subject when you take a photo. If you want to find out more about smartphone cameras, feel free to check out our technically video on smartphone cameras. One true test to a smartphone camera would be low light photography, something that has been a bane to smartphone cameras due to their tiny little sensors. From a pure hardware perspective, the Mi 11 Ultra with its larger than most sensor would allow it to capture a cleaner image with more detail and a higher dynamic range, which should be more evident in darker environments. While there's definitely still some room for improvement, I'm actually quite impressed, especially when I took this photo in near darkness. The onboard AI engine took over, applying just the right amount of exposure compensation to brighten things up and denoising to clean up image noise, giving us a somewhat natural looking image that is still quite sharp with minimal artifacts. One other thing that really caught my eye was how well the auto white balance actually worked even in almost pitch darkness. My skin tone actually looks pretty good uh, and really close to the real thing. And to put things into context, a lot of phone cameras tend to overcompensate in terms of exposure or mess up white balance when taking photos in the dark, giving us smudgy images with plasticky skin tones. Also, the optical image stabilization here definitely helps stabilize the camera to remove unwanted camera shake should you or the AI engine decide to to crank up exposure times. Oh, and before I forget, the main camera module also has a secondary display integrated into its side and can be customized. And yes, you can use it to capture high resolution selfies of yourself. But before you get too excited, I need to tell you that this feature only works in photo mode which is a bummer if you're trying to live stream using the back cameras. Further customization is limited to just making it tell you the time, date, how much battery you have left or who messaged you. Beyond that, you can also change it to show a picture or some really cheesy message. There, like one of those motivational quotes from those gurus gurus that you see online. Lah. As for the front selfie camera, it's pretty standard. You get a 20 megapixels camera that is pretty much industry standard these days, including filters and options that now allow you to take group V fees. And if you got face problem, unlike me, you can get all of those May 2 features to beautify yourself when taking pictures and even making video calls. But then given the display preview mode with the secondary screen behind, I fail to see why you would even want to capture selfies with the front camera. Except when live streaming, of course, because the screen doesn't work when you are taking videos. 
For video, the front selfie camera goes up to 1080p in 60 frames per second and it's actually pretty steady as you can see. But I think this is some sort of um, digital stabilization because it crops in quite a bit versus if you take a picture. Um, colors look okay, exposure wise, auto exposure and white balance is pretty good, um, quite natural but the low light performance in the front camera is pretty meh. All the back cameras support video capture up to 4K 60 frames per second or 8K 24 frames per second and you can choose between H.264 and H.265 codecs. H.265 is really hard to edit on most computers so I would generally suggest that you stick to H.264. You can also shoot in HDR10+, though if your monitor or phone does not support it like this one does, then you won't be able to view the footage properly. As mentioned before, OIS is only available on the main camera and telephoto. It actually works pretty well. On the main camera, it took out a lot of the bumps and jitters when I was walking, and on the telephoto, I handheld it while tracking my favorite koi fish named Shogun, and the footage looks buttery smooth as you can see. Even without the OIS, the ultra wide is still relatively steady, just don't go around chasing tail with it. The slow mo on the Mi 11 Ultra is also pretty cool. I mean, 1920 FPS and 960 FPS modes in 1080p in a phone. Hell to the yeah! While it's certainly not the sharpest as expected with a tiny phone sensor, uh, if you have ample amount of lighting, the footage actually looks quite decent. All in all, the video quality on this phone is really good. Thanks to those large sensors, you get a good amount of bokeh, which always makes things look more expensive. You also get a little more dynamic range than most phones, which retains more highlight and shadow details. Even in the dark, while definitely losing quite a lot of detail and sharpness, the footage still looks pretty good for a phone. While the camera on the Mi 11 Ultra is not going to beat out large sensor mirrorless cameras anytime soon, if Xiaomi continues to innovate towards this direction, the future is going to be very exciting. The Mi 11 Ultra doesn't have an audio jack, which means that most of you guys are probably going to be using some sort of wireless earbuds or headphones. For Wireless Studio, it's using the Qualcomm FX HD codec and supports high-res audio. But I would say that your experience depends equally as much on your wireless headphones and earphones. But if you want the best audio quality, I would use a USB Type-C to 3.5mm jack adapter like the one that is included in the package. As for speakers, it's actually surprisingly good for a phone. Tweaked by Harman Kardon, the speakers sound pretty clear and open and also don't have that weird hollow teeny sound that some mobile phone speakers tend to have due to some sort of overcompensation in the EQ. Here's a sound test. As a summary, here are the pros, mehs and cons to this Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. I give the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra an Ultra Phonographer's wet dream, hashtag cheap buy, 8.5 out of 10. This is actually a really solid flagship smartphone from Xiaomi with one of the most impressive camera modules out there and it kind of reminds me of my ancient Nokia Lumia 920 which is older than some of you guys. While still not perfect, especially when it comes to the software, the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra does boast some of the best hardware and also premium build quality that I've ever seen in a flagship smartphone. Xiaomi has definitely taken a huge leap towards the top and that's all folks, if you thought this video is awesome, don't forget to like and share and leave a comment down below if you have any questions regarding the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra and I will try to reply to you in the comment section which is coming up next. And so don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the notification bell and also follow us on Facebook and Instagram to see more shenanigans from the Mob House crew and I will see you in the next one after the comment section. For today's comment section, we're going to look at our Legion 5 Pro review and starting with Facebook because I only browse only Facebook. See you now. To show some appreciation to our supporters, I'm gonna start by replying all the supporters first. Here are some classics from Edward Pascal. He said if the Legion 5 Pro comes with free black gloves, then he will buy already. Wait, the gloves I give you, huh? You buy already? Give me, huh? 
Leo Tao Tao asked me how much is this in peso? I really don't know because I'm not in the Philippines. But you can Google, probably. Norman Ingan tests his two best friends and say, Yep, now this thing is stalking me. Eh, I'm a tank man. I'm a tan, not a tank. Hafizam Satumi say, 165 hertz per correct. Grey Un Sung Hao says, This laptop cost his entire life. Eh, go or not? Don't so drama, can I? Moving on to the wonderful world of you, Tew. I need to use two phones because too many comments already. You guys have been too passionate of your comments. Many people actually commented and say they want to buy this laptop but no stock in the shop. We can't do anything because now everything's shortage, bro. Lee Aden say, sorry bro, let me finish watching Lee Ji Chia and Chen Long first, then I'll drop a like for you. Thank you very much, bro. Fitri Gamer say he actually liked my Te Tare very halal joke. This is one of the funniest things he's ever heard. <gasps> I feel so touched. Dersento. Tess say, hey, I just bought this laptop, going to get it tomorrow. I am excited. I am also excited for you because so many people cannot get. You can get, you power. Ken Chow said, first, got medal mo. You first, man. I see six more people before you, leh. Danish Arbin says that we are very underrated. He's never been this impressed and entertained watching a tech review. Keep it up, boss. Thank you, bro. Keep up the support so that we can get more subscribers. Finally, I want to thank all of you nice people who says that this is a nice review because our team here at Mob House has put in a lot of effort to make these videos for you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, leave more comments so I can interact more with you because I'm very talkative as you can see. I talk a lot in my video so I can talk with you and I'll see you in the next one.